Hi everyone and welcome back to another City Daily number, I don't know how many, there has been many. Welcome back. Um, my name is Emma, if you don't know me, I'm from the Cotton site and I'm currently interning with City Church. Um, and today I just want to talk to you a little bit about the call of God and how we respond. Um, to do that, I'm going to be looking at a passage in Exodus. It's Exodus 3 verses 2 to 14. It's pretty lengthy. I'm going to read the whole thing. Just bear with me. Promise it's worth it. It's worth getting through it. So Exodus 3 verse 2 says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses. Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So there's a few things I want to pick up from that passage. And the first thing is Moses's initial response to God's call. God calls Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am. And now the Hebrew word that is used here is hineni. My Hebrew skills are not top notch. So I'm going to say that with confidence, but if I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me. Um, yes, so the Hebrew word that is used here is hineni. And it holds a lot more weight than simply just here I am. It's not kind of a, oh, here I am, like I'm just here. It holds a lot more weight than that. And actually it is a sign of total readiness, of total availability. It's here I am, God, send me, use me. I'm ready for you to do what you want, for you to have your way. And so the here I am that Moses expresses here is weighty. It's not just kind of like, oh, I'm over here. It's here I am, God, use me. I'm listening, I'm ready, and I'm willing. And so Moses' initial reaction is a real openness to whatever God wants him to do. But then we see once God gives the call, gives the instruction, <laughs> Moses starts to protest to God. He starts to ask questions. Self-doubt starts to come in. Um, and so he follows up by asking, who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And I think we do this a lot. We say, God, I'm, I'm ready, send me. And then he gives you a call and it's like, oh, but wait, maybe someone else should do that. Um, I know I do that a lot. Self-doubt comes in. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure actually that I'm the person for that job. Who am I to do that? Um, and I think it's really interesting how God responds to Moses in this moment, because instead of affirming who Moses is, instead of kind of affirming Moses's character and the person that he is, God makes himself the subject of the narrative. He answers the question of who am I with, I will be with you. It's about who God is and his presentness in a situation as opposed to 
who Moses is. He's leading Moses to fix his eyes on God as opposed to on himself. And I think that that is really significant. However, what we see is that Moses keeps protesting. He, he keeps asking questions. Um, and in her book called Women of the Word, Jen Wilkins says this. Also, 10 out of 10 would recommend this book. It's really good. Even if you're not a woman, if you're a man of the word, you should read this book. Um, anyway, she says, for an entire chapter and a half of Exodus, Moses asks the wrong questions. Who am I? What should I do? Rather than answer him, Moses, you are my chosen servant. You are my precious creation, a gifted and wise leader. God responds by completely removing Moses from the subject of the discussion and inserting himself. He answers Moses's self-focused question of who am I with the only answer that matters, I am. And so I think that this is really significant. The fact that um, God answers Moses's question of who am I with who he is, who God is. Um, and there's something significant in that for us where we can feel God calling us when the self-doubt comes in, actually, it's not about who we are. It's about who he is. Um, and I think we have a tendency to kind of look inward and make ourselves the center of the story. But actually, when God calls us, it's not to our own kind of personal story. We've made it like, what's the call for my life? What am I meant to do? Me, 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 me. Um, but when God calls us, he's calling us into the bigger story that he's writing. You know, like it's, it's about the bigger story he's writing and what a privilege it is that he wants us to be part of that. He's calling us into that. And therefore, when he calls, it's not about who I am, it's about who he is. And so I think that there's a real challenge in this story of Moses. I think it's very relatable. I like to read this story and be like, oh, Moses, would you just do what God's saying? Just be obedient. Like, why are you asking all these questions? But I do that. I think we all do. We have those moments of like, oh, is that really God? Or like, he's calling me, but I don't feel super confident. I don't think I'm the right person for this. But actually, we need to turn our eyes away from ourselves and onto God and see that he is bigger, that it's about who he is. And that when he calls us, he's calling us into the bigger story that he's writing. And that is what is important and so i would challenge you to just ask yourself what is your response to god when he calls do you have that um hineni moment of here i am god total readiness i'm ready send me wherever you want to send me i'll do whatever you say you have my obedience or is there a temptation to doubt and to question and to put off obedience because you don't feel qualified um, I think those are questions to ask ourselves and actually what this needs to lead us to is to fix our eyes on God once again, to fix our eyes on who he is, not on who we are. And that is the most important thing we can do um, to make sure that we meet God's call with readiness and willingness to do what he says.